recently we had a video about gallium and radioactivity and several of you in your comments and one viewer called Mats in an email pointed out that I had completely missed a really good connection between gallium and plutonium and that gallium was really important for making atom bombs. This came as quite a surprise to me because if you look at the shelves behind me, there are quite a few books on atom bombs, mostly on the history, but I never realised that gallium was important. And it's only important in the bombs that contain plutonium, such as the one called Fat Man that was tragically dropped on the city of Nagasaki. At 10.58 the morning of August 9th, the bomb was exploded above the city and in the towering mushroom, Japan could read its doom. And the problem is related to the way that atom bombs work. And the way that an atom bomb works is that one atom of plutonium is hit by a neutron, it splits into two releasing energy, and it produces two neutrons, each of which go on to react or to split other atoms of plutonium. So you get a chain reaction and the explosion just builds up and up and up. Now, there are two problems that you have if you're building an atom bomb. The first one is that you have to have enough plutonium so that if a neutron comes out of the first plutonium atom, it will hit another plutonium atom before it escapes from your lump of plutonium. The second problem is you mustn't have too much plutonium or the spontaneous radioactive decay could start the bomb exploding before you're ready. So you have to have a very precise mass of plutonium. And one of the ways that they get round this, or they got round this when they were devising this bomb, was to have a sphere of plutonium, which had in the middle two elements, beryllium and polonium, which when you mix them together, gives you lots of neutrons but the beryllium and polonium were separate in the middle. And the idea was that the whole of the plutonium was surrounded by explosives. At the right moment, all of the explosives would go off and the ball of plutonium would be compressed. It would get denser, the plutonium atoms closer together, so it was harder for the neutrons to escape. And at the same moment, the beryllium and polonium would be mixed up together and a big number of neutrons would be released to set the thing off. Now the key point was that the sphere of plutonium had to be absolutely round because otherwise when you tried to compress it, if it wasn't round, it would squash into the wrong shape and wouldn't get dense. And the difficulty is that pure plutonium is very difficult to make into a shape. The technique they used was called hot pressing, so that you take heated mould and press it at, I think, 400 degrees centigrade. With pure plutonium, you get the so-called alpha phase, which, when you take the mould apart, begins to flake off and is not suitable it was realised that you could mix the plutonium with a small amount of another element which would change the arrangement of the atoms in the metal, so-called different phase, instead of the alpha phase, so-called delta phase, which was slightly less dense and much easier to mould or to hot press. They began by trying aluminium, but the problem with aluminium was that it could itself become radioactive as plutonium atoms decayed. And the radioactive aluminium started giving off neutrons, which could have caused the whole thing to go off prematurely. In the end, they went down the periodic table from aluminium to gallium, and gallium worked really well. You just needed a small amount of gallium, a bit more than 3%, and that was enough to fabricate 
the sphere in the way you want it. So it's a bit like cooking, Professor. It's a bit like putting an ingredient like, you know, an egg or something into your cake just to help get the mixture right. Yes, I suppose so. And um, it's not so much that it's bonding them together as arranging them in a better form of packing. But I like your egg idea. Professor, would the gallium then stay in the plutonium for the, the life of the bomb? Yes, the gallium just stays there. And in fact, because the density is slightly less, and of course, as the sphere gets bigger, you can get more on the outside, you can actually get a bit more plutonium in your bomb and it still be safe. Or at least safe until you let it off. The other thing is that plutonium itself can oxidise, react with air, so you have to give it a coating on the outside to stop it reacting with air. And on the first bomb, the one that was tested in New Mexico, they put a layer of silver, which wasn't very satisfactory, and subsequently they put a layer of the metal nickel. And then the bomb has a whole sort of multi-layer of different metals and then the explosive to put the whole thing together. And one of the books that I've got called Atom Bombs has quite a nice picture inside showing how this is put together. But the reason for having this ball is this ball is almost exactly the size, 3.62 inches in diameter, 9.2 centimetres of the core of the Fat Man bomb. So it's really not very big. And when the bomb actually went off, the amount of plutonium that split and gave the energy was only one gram. The ball of plutonium weighed over six kilos, so just a tiny fraction of that actually caused the explosion. And presumably the rest of the plutonium was blown all over the place. So gallium was an important ingredient, but it was an important ingredient for the manufacturing of the bowl, not for any part of the detonation or explosion or anything. And according to a website I looked at called FAQs about nuclear weapons, gallium is still used for making modern nuclear weapons. Professor, do you think all these books you're buying and websites you're looking at are going to get you on some kind of watch list? Oh, I hope not. But I think that the, the history of the project of the atom bomb is extremely interesting, not only for the physics and the chemistry that was involved, but the deep moral question that has always worried me, that if I had been a scientist during the Second World War, would I have worked on nuclear weapons?